Welcome back everybody, my name is Philip and today we will use Aurora HDR 2019 once more to do a very quick but awesome, awesome edit. Now if you've never heard of HDR photography, I check, I check, no, I recommend to check this particular video before you actually go into this one. It's going to give you all the background that you need, explain you what kind of uh, equipment you will need to actually execute it, and then presents different softwares as alternatives to Aurora if you don't like it necessarily, but it is my personal favorite, so we're going to use it today. So we're going to go and take an image that looks like that that I took down in the Arches National Park in Utah and convert it to this with uh, very little work, but an awesome, awesome effect. Let's jump right in. Now usually in HDR photography you take three different exposures and then merge them in an HDR software or Photoshop or whatever you want to use. So we're only going to use one image today with Aurora HDR 2019 and convert it to something awesome in no time whatsoever. By the way, if you're thinking on buying Aurora HDR 2019 yourself, make sure you save some bucks by using the link down there in the description or promo code Let's Image at checkout. Okay, so the first thing we have to do is, of course, drag our single RAW file into Aurora HDR. Now I'm just going to take it and drag it to the right into Aurora. It's going to open up the good old dialog and I'm going to say create HDR. By the way, if you hear random noises in the background, that is because I'm in a hotel and the cleaning personnel currently cleans. Loudly. Cool, so now let's have a look at the before and after, after before actually doing anything. So if you look at the original, which is on the left hand side, and the after, which is on the right hand side, it's already for me absolutely fascinating that the amount of detail the um, Aurora HDR can extract of the image essentially is so great. I mean, look at this. I also love what it did to the sky. So it brought out a little bit more texture of the, well, let's say fluffy clouds there. So we can take it from here and we can make it even greater. So the first thing I wanna do is add a new layer. And here, let's have a look if we can find a look, like a preset essentially, that will get us a certain amount of, uh, well, meters or whatever uh, on the way. So for instance, if we hit the anti-vegan tiger, interesting. And it just brightens up the foreground a little bit, which is something I like. So we can take that as a starting point. Let's get rid of the looks and let's take it from here. So let's add another layer on top of that. Uh, okay, a new adjustment layer. Now I want to get some more blue or more dark blue into the sky. There are many different ways of doing that. I can just go down to the polarizing filter and drag that towards the right. And you see, I mean, it definitely works with the sky. So I'm gonna find something that I find nice. Now maybe something like that is not, not too bad. I like it. Now that we have that, I also want to bring out the yellows and the oranges in the back here a little bit more. So I can just go down to my HSL well section and here I can increase the saturation of the orange. So maybe to something like that and also the reds a little bit because they're obviously playing a big part in that as well. Doing that though, I have to be careful not to go too red because otherwise these mountains look kind of weird. So let's just do it ever so slightly. Maybe, maybe just something like that is already enough. Cool. Now what we have here is we have a beautiful foreground. It's, it's kind of, well, at least I find it beautiful because there's just nothing other than this weird vegetation. So I want to bring out the clarity in this one a little bit more and maybe also in the sky. So let's add another adjustment layer. Go down to the HDR enhance section and I'm just gonna hit the middle for the clarity. And look what that does. I love it so hard, especially in the foreground and also partly in the sky, to be honest. So let's use that and bring it in selectively. So I think what I'll do is I'm gonna use a brush. So I'm gonna click on the little brush symbol, hit the brush, <laughs> uh, make my brush a little bit larger to something like that. And I'm just gonna brush the effect in, let increase clarity into my image. And especially here in the foreground, that's why I kind of like it a lot. And also here in these clouds a little bit, maybe just like that. Now, if I hit the done button and uh, do the before and the after, that amount of clarity is absolutely beautiful. I'm really, really happy with that. It, it makes the image pop a little bit more. So, and uh, let's just do one more thing. Let's add a new adjustment layer, maybe two things. Go all the way down to the vignette and I'm gonna add a nice vignette especially to the foreground and actually it works very well with the the upper part of the image as well so maybe something like that let's feather this out a little bit more and also maybe increase the brightness of the inner part just a little bit just to something like that maybe 
Look at that. Now it might be a little bit too bright in the foreground. I am very undecided. Uh, usually also I would stop editing for a while and then come back just to see if the colors and the brightness work for me at that point. Now let's have a quick look at the total before and after and before and after. Absolutely insane. Now when you do edit or when you create HDR images from a single image, you will often have a, a situation where you have a lot of noise, right? So you can see it's all pixely and grainy in the sky here. So I would like to kind of get rid of this a little bit. So I'm going to create one more adjustment layer. And here I'm going to go to HDR denoise, that one. So I'm going to zoom into 100%, which is normally around the percentage that I try to get little, little, little words, little to no noise. <laughs> so I'm going to zoom in like that, hit the HDR denoise button like halfway or something like that, just to see how it affects the sky. And I think that is more than enough. We can even go a little bit lower, but you get the idea. Now that I have that, of course, I don't want to get rid of the detail that I have in the foreground here. So again, I'm going to go to brush. I'm going to hit the gradient mask and I'm going to drag top to bottom, maybe in this kind of weird angle, <laughs> drag it somewhere properly in the middle, something like that, hit the OK button. And now I have the noise reduction only in the sky. That looks absolutely beautiful. I'm really a big fan of that image, especially considering it comes from this to that, this to that. Now, lastly, we might want to crop a tiny bit into the image. So I'm going to hit the little crop symbol on the top right here, make sure I can crop freely and now bring it in just a little bit on the top and also a little bit on the bottom, maybe something like that. Hit the enter key, it's going to apply that particular crop. And uh, then I think I'm a very, very happy person with that image. So one more time, here's the quick slider and we have the before and the after and the before and the after. Beautiful. And there we go. Is it not absolutely insane what you can do with a single raw file if you throw it into Aurora? I am always blown away by how simple and beautiful it can possibly be. Awesome, so that's my quick edit for this week. I hope you did like the video. If you did like the video, then do not forget to hit the thumbs up button. And also, if you're new, don't forget to subscribe. And uh, I shall keep it coming if you keep watching. Until next time, and you have a good one.